Hey everybody, Jason Shadrick here with PremierGuitar.com and we're with Trace Foster who is Joe Perry's guitar tech and we're in Milwaukee at Summerfest and they're getting ready to play the Marcus Amphitheater tonight and Trace is going to walk us through Joe's guitars and amps and pedals that he's using on this tour. So Trace, thanks a lot for uh, talking Thank to you. us today. It's going to be fun, appreciate it. Let's so start so let's start guitar. Yeah, with the guitars, what do you have uh, out here? We have the old Joe Perry mainstay here which is the clear Dan Armstrong. Okay, the only difference about this guitar from a stock one is these pickups yeah, are all yeah. custom made. And you sure got this guy over are. here interrupting. Sure they are. <laughs> I you, made those pickups. Don't you go <laughs> over there to your world. <laughs> you get to that soon enough. All right, so the only difference between this one and then these are custom made pickups that we have. Is this the original one he's had since the 70s? This, I'd love to tell you that it is, but it's not. Okay. Uh, that one is actually retired. He has two of the original ones that are, that are in his, his studio at his house. This one... We've got a couple of these made. They're, they're pretty much identical. They sound great. And what we do is it's an open A. And this right here, a lot of people, this is very interesting. It's a Keith Richards style open A, five string. But what Joe does is we throw a bass string on the bottom and we make it an A as well. So that gives it that, that growl. So, and what tunes does he use this, this guitar on? This is Draw the Line. And uh, this is, like I said, you can see he's been, he used to beat it up a lot. He used to throw it down and he's kind of mellowed out with it now. But, uh, it's a good workhorse. It's one of his main guitars for sure. I mean, everyone, if you think of Joe Perry, this is one of the guitars that you think of. And speaking of Joe Perry, when you think of Joe Perry, this is the other guitar that people think of. This is the blinged version of the BC Rich Bitch. This is the 10 string. And what this does is, as you can see, the D, the G, the B, and the high E are all unison. And these strings are actually different gauges because it gives it a little bit a little bit different sound, a little more clarity, and it kind of gives a little bit of that, not out of tune, but real, you know, Jingly warble. something in there, yeah, a good warble in there. And uh, he uses this one on Living on the Edge, and whatever else he wants. This is a drop D. And what are all the uh, switches for? Uh, they're all disconnected. Oh, okay. <laughs> Makes Actually, it easy. Well, they all do a lot of different things, but for what we're using it for right now, it became a lot easier for us just to make it a volume and a tone, so I rewired past all these because we would hit something and it would change the whole right. complexity of the tone. So we went straight back to the, uh, you know, just your, your volume and tone, Les Paul style, so to speak. So that's, uh, that's the BC Rich. Come over here to a custom shop telly that he has. This is, uh, this is the No More No More guitar. And what this is, is this guitar is tuned in all E's and all B's. That's it. So it's uh, like an E5 tuning. And what it does, is this is what he plays on the intro, and then during this, when the lead comes up, we actually change guitars. He just throws this one behind his back, and he plays the solo on a regular tune guitar. And this is just a custom shop telly with a, with a very interesting robotic-looking uh, mm -hmm. pickup there. That uh, it's, it's it's an old like Gretsch pickup from I don't even know when. It's just been it's been in there forever. Did it come with the guitar? Or did you guys put that it in? Came in with the guitar. Okay. And then we have. All right. We have the Joe Perry models, of course. Can't do a show without his Joe Perry. This is Joe Perry Les Paul model number one. This is the first year that he uh, that he did Les Pauls. And this is the one that's got his name on it. And this is a very, uh, very, very, very cool guitar. Is this his main guitar throughout the show? Nope. He switches. Okay. He, like, uh, depends on, on the night and what sounds good. We, um, he really relies on the way it feels. If he, if he gets a guitar... That we'll make a set list with the, with the guitars and stuff on there, and if something doesn't sound right or feel right to him, he'll switch. He'll be like, hey, I really like the way the Telly sounds tonight, so we'll go to Telly's. Or, you know, he likes the Strat. And it's, it's not unlike him to completely change mid-show, and, and we just throw it all out the window. But this guitar here is very, 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 very good. And what strings are you using on all your guitars? These are, I use different string companies and different gauges. These right here, this guitar here has Ernie Balls. These are nines. I use eights, nines, or tens, depending on what the guitars are. So then we go over here to Joe Perry Les Paul number two. This is his Boneyard Les Paul. And this was his second Gibson model. Okay, this guitar here is, uh, as you can see, quite just amazing. It's a beautiful guitar. This is more, the neck is very 50s, very baseball bat. He likes big fat necks. He can play anything. It's amazing how he'll go from one guitar with a really small skinny neck and he'll grab the next song with a big fat neck, which is really hard to do, but he yeah. just, he adapts really well. This guitar here, um, like I said, it's the second one that Gibson did and it came out really well and it sounds amazing. 
It's just, uh, it's got the, the two pickups are wired out of phase. It's the old greenie, the Green old uh, Peter style, Green thing. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. And that comes stock. Okay. So it's a very unique sounding guitar. It sounds different than the black one. What tunes does he uh, favor this one for? It doesn't matter. So he's, he, it doesn't matter. Okay. And one day he might play this, you know, on, I don't know, let's say SOS. And the next day he's like, oh, I want to strat for that song. I want to tell you for that song. I want to use the 10 string. He, he's can switch back and forth. So really, other than the, all, the specialty alternate tuned guitars, anything else is free game? Anything goes. Anything yeah, goes. And, it, and it does. Yeah. <laughs> okay, over here we have... This is a company called Echo Park Guitars. Mm -hmm. This guy named Gabriel Curry built this for Joe. This is called the Blue Rose. As you can see, it's got the upside down whammy bar. It's got the standard regular right-handed headstock on it. This guitar, uh, Gabriel came to the studio when we are doing the record and he had a couple guitars and Joe just loved them. So he built Joe a couple guitars and you'll see them here in a second. But uh, again, this, this hollow, semi-hollow, we had to fill it up a little bit because it gets a little, uh, little buzzy, and a little uh, feedbacky, so that takes care of it, but it's, uh, it's a beautiful guitar. Did you end up using that guitar on the record? We did. That guitar is used all over the record, actually. And we have a bunch of these. This is just your run-of-the-mill custom shop Fender Strats. But what Joe has is all of his Strats all have something a little different than the other one. Whether it's pickups that are different, it's a different tremolo system. This one here is, as you can see, is whacked off there. It has a, uh, of course, a Canadian sticker that goes well in Canada. <laughs> and it has, this has the noiseless pickups in it. So this here is, has become a main guitar for this leg right now because it's it's a really good sounding strat that uh, really cuts through and chimes really well and uh, so we're very very lucky to have this one okay now comes the cool we're getting to the to the <laughs> the, the song specific guitars this is uh, a six string bass it's like a small scale bass this is an Ernie Ball this here is used on the song Back on the Saddle Joe originally wrote it on a um, on a Fender but that guitar was stolen many, many years ago. So this is what we have to replace. And it's, uh, it's amazing. It's just got lots of growl and it's got a uh, Floyd Rose on it. Which is and what's the tuning amazing. on this one? The tuning on this one is, it's, it's G, it's one whole step down. Standard tuning, one whole step down. And it's uh, very growly, and of course with it, and he, he actually plays lead on it, which is pretty amazing to watch him just you know going all over this <laughs> thing. So that's very cool. And what gauge strings do you have on that one? These are 45 to 105. So, and you get to hear him just bend it, and it's, it's pretty amazing. I love that. <laughs> and through his amp rig, it sounds just all over the top, sorry. This is the Chandler lap steel. Oh, yeah. Okay. This, this is the uh, Ragdoll guitar that we use for Ragdoll. And this guitar here is tuned to an E chord. It's actually an E chord that he plays slide on it. And it's the Chandler Joe Perry lap steel. And what strings and gauges are you using on this one? It's a 12-string set here, and it's a it's a 13 set on the bottom. Vault number two. Over here we have Jeff Beck Esquire. This is uh, an, an exact, as close as you're going to get, model to his Jeff Beck's exact Esquire. I mean, down to the scratches and the nicks. Uh, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick has one of these out, and I checked them out together, and I didn't know which one was which. I mean, they're that close. It's amazing. This guitar sounds really good. He'll use this on like uh, Chip Away at the Stone or um, Last Child, something that's, uh, you know, got a lot of that telly feel to it. And I put uh, tens on this because it's mostly for a rhythm guitar. If, if Brad's doing the solo, we'll use this for rhythm. Right here we have Joe Perry Les Paul number three. This guitar is brand spanking new this year. And this right here, once you get that shot, I'll flip it over and show you the headstock. You can see it's got the old Joe Perry name on there. There you go. And as I flip this over, you'll see the Joe Perry prototype on the back of the headstock. This guitar, we were in the studio, and we're talking about different guitars that Joe wanted this year. And he wanted a lighter Les Paul with a tremolo on it. So we're like, okay, let's try to get, let's try to get him to make one. And they, uh, they come up with this one. And it's really, if you pick it up, you'll see. And what do they do exactly to make it so it's light? It's basically like an access body. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is they've completely chopped away anything that's thinner. 
they've chopped away any of the meat that that basically gave it weight. And it sounds really, really good. I mean, it's, uh, you know, this is a Wilkinson. Yep, and what we do is love the rollers. That's like my favorite part of it. And what this does here is if we're, we pull it back a whole step, that's the secret. Joe loves to go up and down. He loves to be able to bury it. He also loves to be able to get one whole step out of it on the other side. Uh, we don't know if this guitar will be a, uh, a guitar you could buy or not. They're not sure if it's going to become a production model. The, Joe's still trying to figure out if he wants it to because he really likes the fact that it's, it's the only one, yeah. which is very cool. Mm -hmm. This is just your, your standard Fender Telecaster with a B-Bender. You can see the uh, B-Bender system in there. And there's absolutely nothing special about this Tele for the fact that it has a B-Bender on it. And what's the bridge pickup on this? The bridge pickup on this is a Bartolini. This guitar here we all know and love as the Billy guitar. This is a Gibson Lucille that actually doesn't have the F-holes and it's missing two of its volume, one volume, one tone. This guitar is a guitar that uh, Gibson had made custom for Joe and Joe had this artist John Douglas airbrush it and John did an amazing job as you can tell. And if you look at the back of this, flipping it over when you get done there, there's another picture on the back. And this guitar is one of those rarities that it looks really cool, but it really sounds good as well. So we don't, he doesn't play it just because it's, you know, his wife's picture on it. He plays it because it sounds really good. This one here is another Echo Park guitar. This is called the Ghetto Bird, okay? This guitar here is, uh, pick it up, it's pretty, it's pretty chunky. Yeah, big neck. It's got a good, yeah, big neck. Joe loves the big necks. Uh, he brought this guitar to the studio. This is one of the ones that he brought to the studio, and as soon as I picked it up, I said, Joe's going to want this one. It just has everything that Joe likes. It's got that look, you know, very sexy looking guitar, and it just has a really good feel. Neck's a big, fat neck, and it sounds really, really good as well. And this has a P90, and it has a, a humbucker in it. And it's uh, volume and a tone, which Joe really loves as well. A lot of guitars lately, we're just keeping volumes, no tones. We're getting like that. The Black Les Paul has one volume, no tone. And that's kind of his new thing. He wants the amps. To do to do all the work. So this is Joe's rack. He does have a few pedals out front, but most Correct. of the pedals he has back here in this rack, right? So all the pedals are basically here, except for a few. Like he has, I'll show you when we get out there. He has a Digitech Whammy and a Pog and stuff like that. That I'll pull the drawer out for you. It'd be easier for you. And uh, he has access to those. And like his, you know, his crybaby because I don't, you know, I want him to be able to do that, not me. So as you can see, I'll, I'll kind of give you the rundown of the the way that it goes, the signal flow. I have four wireless. And with this custom-made Bradshaw setup, all four of my wireless are on at one time. So I've got four guitars that Joe can say, Strat, and I can give him a Strat. I don't have to, like, turn something on, turn something off. It's ready to go. So I have four guitars at all time. From there, it goes down here to another Bradshaw. If you can see it, it has, it's basically a, a, a come out of here mono into this box here. And I've got five amps that splits to five amps out there, out front. Okay. So what it does, it's just basically a big through box, okay? And then this here is my MIDI. I'll show you in a second. Let's connect it. And the other split from here, one goes to here. The other side of it goes down to here to the 11, the DigiDesign 11. What this does is this isn't anything to do with his live sound. That is for monitoring. That's for Joey Kramer. Joey doesn't want to hear all the delays and the effects. He just wants a straight, dry signal. So this is, I've dialed in a Vox you know, nice kind of crunchy Vox sound, that's, that's what he hears in his ears. So that works out really well for Joey. Okay? And then up here I'll show you the pedals that we use. It's from here, like I said, it goes to the amps. And then we have a Bradshaw switching system. And here's the pedals right now that, uh, that are in the, in, the, in the loop, so to speak. We have the, uh, a lot of TC stuff. We have the Vortex Flanger, which uh, that one and the flashback delay and then we have the Hall of Fame Reverb, which is TC. And the funny thing about those three pedals is the delay and the reverb is the only delay and reverb that have not had to change in two years. Joe, like, like 2010, we changed reverbs and delays every week. He's like, I don't like the reverb, I don't like the delay. When I put those in, we've never changed them. He loves them. I was going to ask so if he's good. the type of guy that changes his pedals quite often. He but likes to be inspired. Yeah. He really, we have... I have about 200 pedals out with me. I have a case of pedals. And believe it or not, I haven't had to change. I've changed a couple of pedals, but most of them have been always, if not, pretty consistent. And we have a, uh, this is his long delay setting. 
Okay, this is for his solo and his leads and stuff. And the flanger is basically, you know, just for a little, add a little texture to it. It's not, it's not a real heavy flanger, okay? Up here, Joe's more into boost than he is distortions. Okay, a lot of people think Joe, they think, oh, loud distorted. It's, it's not it at all. Well, his setting is very clean. And we use this Duesenberg Gold Boost, which really does boost at about 15 dB. And it's a really good rhythmic boost for like the strats to kind of lift them up a little bit and kind of get it more in the mix. And then right here we have an option five, which is the same kind of pedal with a little bit of different color to it. And that I have about 20 dB hot to give it a little bit more, more lift. So he has the ability for two of those. And this here is the Klon. That's his obviously, that's, everybody needs a Klon. If you could find one. Everybody can afford it and find one. one. Yeah, I wish I had, I had the money and, and the knowledge when those things came out and bought all of them I could find. But we've got three of those. And that, uh, I took it out of the pedal board for about a week and uh, every day he kept, something's wrong, something's wrong. And then when I put it, once we went back to the Klon, he was like, there you go, that's, that's what I was missing. <laughs> it's true, that's, that's really part of, part of his sign. And how long has the Klon been in his rig since? Since well, probably at least, I would say, probably 10 years. I mean, it's been a while. And uh, like I said, when, when they found them, they bought three of them. Him and Brad each bought three. So and he's got all three of them. He's very, uh, he loves his Klons. Are they all the gold ones with the guy they're on the They're all the front? exact one. Yeah, the exact same one stories about you know they're all the same or some of them like without brad i think has one without without the horse okay. it's like you know just the maybe a little bit different color so you also have uh he has a controller out front yes. for the bradshaw system and you have a, a, another one back here so how do you know when to switch things on and when's he going to cover certain switches if i look out there and he's on the front of the stage all the way out in the crowd he's not going to be able to get back and turn his delay on for his lead and I, and I know I know where it goes so I'll turn it on sometimes he'll turn something on and he'll walk off to go play over on the other side of the stage and he doesn't have to run back and turn stuff off and there's other times where you know he's just into the moment and I'll turn something on and off and I can tell by his body movements if he likes a certain sound that night like if I turn the the reverb on and he kind of looks a little you know looks around a little bit I know he doesn't like it and then if that's the case, we won't use it as much, and I'll, I'll watch to see when he uses it. And once he pushes stuff a couple times, it becomes pretty apparent, you know, where it's gonna, you're going to want to put it. And then uh, we just have fun. There's, there's no, I've done tours where everything is set, this song, you push this button, you do this, you do this. We, we just fly by the seat of our pants every day. It's different every time, every solo. One solo we could, we could play with, you know, the clon on with the you know, with the copycat delay, and then the next time the exact same solo, we could use something totally different. Yeah. So it's, it's different every time. So there's a lot of freedom. It's, it's freestyle, and it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, he doesn't play the same thing every night. Why should he have the same song? And since he's been playing the same songs for 30 years, it kind of keeps it fresh, you know? He, he told me he doesn't want to be an Aerosmith cover band, and I totally get what he's talking about. He wants, he wants to be inspired. That's yeah. what he told me. When I first started working for him, he said, look, the, the, my main thing is I want to be inspired. And so my goal is to make it to where every day he kind of gives me that look and gives me a smile and a nod and away he goes. And that's, that to me at the end of the day is what it's all about, you know. And also I have, uh, with the Sure Wirelesses here, I have a cable, which is a 50-foot Klotz cable. It's this German cable that you can run up to 100 foot and not lose any, any real signal out of it. And that's in case the wirelesses die. Never had that happen, so the Sure Wirelesses are just amazing. This is their new, their new digital, the ULDX. It's the closest thing to the cable I've ever heard. And so we're really inspired by those as well. You want to go see? Let's the go out front and see the amps. All right. Yeah. All right. So Joe is not afraid to bring a lot of amps with him on tour. So let's start at this end of his amp on walk down. Just tell us a little bit about what the amps are and how sure. we use them each night. Okay. First off, there's 20 feet of amps here, so we got a lot of amps to cover, <laughs> and they're all on. People always ask me, they go, "Well, what does he use, and what's for show?" If this is all used, which is part of the battle. What we have here is we have a. We have two plexis, we have two Marshall plexis. One's a 69, one's a 70. Uh, the 69 plexi has the KT-66s in them, and the 70 has the, the EL-34s. I'm not sure, I can't remember which one's which, but I listen to them both each day and determine which one I want to use as his main sound, the other one's his backup. Okay. okay. These are just standard Marshall speakers. These are, these are 30s. I like to have it, like I said, we're all about clean. We have no master volumes, it's all clean. If we just like to turn it up to where it just starts to break up and we let the pedals do the rest and the guitars. That's why every guitar he has sounds completely different. And that's by design because it allows us to, to really, he knows when he wants to strat, he knows what it's gonna sound like. He doesn't have to worry about what pedals are on or what amps it's, you know. Okay, and then over here, I'll start with here. This is um, JTM 45, this is the, uh, the reissues. Okay, these have the EL 34s in them as well. 
And this is, uh, I have three of those. This is my main one. I have two backups. And this is also a, let's see, what's the best way to put it? A homemade, custom-built siren that sounds like you're getting pulled over by the police. It's okay. amazing. And you, you'll, he loves to use it, and it's, it's got its own 50-watt amp. <laughs> and it comes through this cabinet here. Okay. And this is also his cabinet if the whole rig goes down. I have a thing in the back where he, I plug them straight in, and this, this will run the whole show until I've corrected whatever the problem is. Right. Up above this, we have Jet City. These are EL84s in the Jet City. This is the um, Jet City 20. This is a 20 watt amp. This is actually powering his talk box right now. This is the 1974 Joe Perry bag with his talk box in there. The old. Same bag. Same bag. Yeah. Same amazing bag. This here. Joe says is one of the best sounding talk box amps. In the studio, we use this for everything, but out here, it just really works for that talk box. It sounds so good, and he's able to get the drive and the, the, the clarity out of it that he needs. Okay, moving over here. This is the backup Plexi. We've already talked about that. This right here is, these are 25 watts, okay? These are just original 25 watt Celestians. This is a little bit more gritty. I want a little bit more breakup out of that, okay? This is, if, if you don't see a microphone in front of it, it's on, but what it is is it's for his stage sound. This whole thing fills up this whole world, this whole side of the stage. We don't obviously mic everything. We've got 12 different cabinets. You don't need 12 different microphones going everywhere. It's just kind of silly. So what we do is we pick and choose what sounds really good for certain things. Okay, so this right here, this speaker here, and the speaker on the other side of, of the Marshall heads, those are actually 215s in that cabinet over there, all right? And both these two, are pushed by the Marshall Majors, the 200 watt KT88 tube driven Marshall Majors. And what year are these? These are like 1970, I want to say. And those things are loud and proud. And we tried to talk box with one of those once, and it was the most amazing thing. I thought we were going to blow fillings out of his head. It was so loud. <laughs> that tube just come flying out of it. It's amazing. Up here behind his American flag, we have a 65 blues breaker okay this is amazing this is uh el34s as well no i'm sorry this is the 5881s oh, yeah. and this has uh four tens so it's very top and very just uh if he's not getting cut that'll do it this is where it goes we pop this baby in there and, and he's got enough cut to to take his head off okay so this, there's a pedal that goes with the marshall major what I do is we try to get a little bit more of 125 and a little bit more of like 1K out of it because it's, it's a little dark. So you have to get it really loud to, to make it kind of more crisp and we can't get that loud. So I use this and it kind of gives me that extra. Okay, so if you come over here, you start to see the, uh, the amps with all the, all the microphones on it. A lot of this is his actual sound in front of house and it's the sound that he uses in the monitors. This is a Dave Friedman amp, Dave Friedman from Rack Systems. This is the Dirty Sheila head. Uh, Dave actually built that rack back there that we were looking at. And uh, while I was there, he said, hey, try this. And we, I plugged it in, and I was like, man, Joe's going to love this. This head is pushing a 15 cabinet over there. OK. And that's the backup to it. Same thing, same head. Just sounds so good. It, this is uh, 5881s as well. So nice drive, but with, with some. A little more bass than a it's typical. Warmth to it. It's, it's very, it's very warm. Which through the 15s is really good. So what that does is it gives him that feeling underneath that he likes to hear, right? And then this this Buddha is we, we've got we've been using Buddha for two tours now, and they've custom built this this for us. This is the the Verb Master. This again is an is an EL84. As you see, we've got every tube configuration there. It's by design though. That's all by design. And what this one does, this is a 15 as well. Okay, so this is one of the sounds that he gets in his wedge, the 15. He loves this as well. So I'm pushing a lot of 15s, I'm pushing 12s. And then if you just move over one more to the left there, when you get done filming that, I'll show you this one. This is a Marshall 8x10 eight by, eight by cabinet, okay? As you can see the two mics as well as this one, we use this for front of house and for his wedges. Joe doesn't use ears, he uses wedges all over the place, okay? This is pushed by this Morse amp right here, okay? Morse is a guy from Toronto, Canada, who just makes these amazing amps. And if you see the amps called the Mojo, we had him custom make an amp for Joe. So the Morse, like I said, is the Morse is pushing the tens, and the tens are a lot of his sound. So we've got 15s, we've got 12s, and we've got tens. 
We've got EL84s, we've got KT88s, we've got KT66s, we've got 5881s. We've got everything imaginable. And this one here was built as like a Vox style for the tens. Okay. okay, Glenn Morris is this guy's name out of Toronto, and he's amazing. The stuff he does is just, and he, we worked really hard on this amp, and it sounds so good. Are these custom models, or are these yeah, so you could, production you know, models that he, he needs makes? To be called, and he needs to make these production models. Okay. Because they're so right now these these are just just for Joe, right. but he obviously is an amp builder. And that's what he does. So I mean he could have. So if somebody him. wanted these this configuration, yeah. they could call him up Absolutely. and get. Absolutely. Say hey, I want that the Mojo configuration. I don't know if we could call it Mojo because that's whatever. or whatever, but it'll be whatever it is. It'll be good. The guy's amazing. He's a, he's he's brilliant. And that has the EL 34s in it as well. Well, let's take a look at his pedal board up front. Sure. Okay, so his pedal board, like I said, he basically has the same controller I have. He can turn stuff on and off, and. Uh, the thing I didn't show you over there is we have amps one, two, amps three, four. Those are in the back of that back of that that rack I showed you all the way up where the heads come out of. And what that does is I'm able to shut off amps if I've got a it's most basically for me if I've got a problem with something, I can shut half the rig down. Okay. And now the thing next to it says talk. What that does, that shuts the whole rig down except for the talk box amp. Okay. So when he does sweet emotion, I can I can turn the talk box on and off and have the amp shut off. Mm -hmm. And that was like the the hardest thing to figure out is how to turn the amps off and turn the talk box on, and right. and so we it, wor it works out pretty well. And well, who we, made the switcher? This is the Bradshaw. This is an old school Bradshaw rig, okay. and I basically pulled out of storage. It hadn't been used since probably the early 90s, uh -huh. and it's uh, had to get the dust out of it, and it works fine. It works really good for what we need it for. So what we see on his pedal board that I don't have, the black pedal over here on the top, that's his siren. Oh, okay. Rob Lauer is the guy that made this siren pedal. He's out of Boston, and. Uh, it's amazing. You know, I mean, it's just it's so cool. I would I would I would hit it, but it would probably take everyone's head off. It's so loud. It's like it's like an air raid siren. And of course we have the Jimi Hendrix Dunlop Wah. Joe loves that's his favorite wah. That's what we use. Uh, next to that, this digital delay here is actually for the siren. He likes the siren to kind of carry on, so he turns the delay on and off. That's, Long delay? Yep. That's not built into his anything to do with his guitar. It's, that's for the siren only. Next to this is the old school Digitech whammy yeah. pedal. It's, they don't make them small like that anymore, and, I, and I'm looking for more of those because uh, it's just for something about that pella he just loves. And then above that is the pog. Okay, this pog has been hot rotted with this pedal right here. Rob, the same guy that built the siren, built this as well. What it's done, we've created a filter. It's like a, uh, a low pass, okay? And you're able to roll it in. So when he hits it, it's, it's almost like, like a volume pedal, but it also, it's a filter. So it's really, it's a very textured, and he's able to do a lot of cool things with, uh, yeah. with that. And what song would you use the Pog on? Anything and everything. Anything and everything. He does, uh, sometimes living on the edge, he'll use it. He'll, 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 oh, he uses it for Legendary Child, the, the, new, the new single that they're playing. Um, he'll use it in places he's never used it before all the time. That's what he does. That's, that's like Sounds like he just likes to experiment from night to night. And he likes to have fun, yeah. which is it's good. I like it too because with him having fun, I have fun. Yeah, right. It's not sterile. You'll never say, I mean, there's a lot of gigs you just sleep through. It's the same thing over and over. You push this button here, push this button there, give him this guitar here. It's not like that here. I mean, it's... it's so even if they could be playing the same or very similar set list from night to night, which they, they don't. Which they don't. They don't. Okay. These guys could have different set lists for the next 40 years and still not play a song twice. <laughs> right. So anyways. Anyways, i got to get to work. Yeah. There you Absolutely. Go. Trace, thank you so much for yeah. taking the time to talk to us. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. See you. This is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com.